the JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and I review pens, fountain pens, paper, ink, all that good stuff. And today, I am continuing my January 2022 quest to share with you pens that I added to my collection last year, but just ran out of year to share with you. So I had more pins than year. And uh, one of the reasons for that is I went to my first pin show. My wife and I went to the Dallas Pin Show back in September of 2021. This is their Retro 51 pin. Grabbed one of those while I was there and uh, had a great time. Never been to one before. Was curious what that was like. I figured that maybe it would be like other shows I've been to. I've been to, to auto shows. I used to love to go to the New York Auto Show. I've been to uh, hunting and fishing and outdoorsman shows, and I love those. You find all kinds of things you're not going to be able to see in person anywhere else. Products, uh, possibilities, and things that you just don't find just surfing the internet or going to local shops, which for fountain pens, local shops here means I hope there aren't any, okay? Uh, Walmart is our only pen store. That's kind of scary. I guess Dollar General, maybe also? No, no, that doesn't count. No, that doesn't count. Anyway, I uh, went to the pen show and I figured it would be like that. And that would also include, like those other shows, great people enthusiastic about their hobby with wonderful insights into things that you hadn't even thought you needed to know. And I found all those things. Wonderful workshop on paper making and, and the quality of paper and things like that. Uh, great collectors were there sharing some of their things and selling some of their collections. And of course, the big makers, Pilot, Visconti, all those guys, they were also there. But I wanted, I had saved up and I wanted to go and find something that was from a small business that was from an actual pin maker you could talk to and meet. Got to do both those things. If it bonus, if it came from my home state of Texas, that would be cool. This meets that criteria. And if they had something in blue or green, my favorite colors, then, then that would be a bonus, right? Yeah, I got that too. Right now, I'm just going to show you the box. I bought a Heinz pen that is absolutely beautiful. I got to visit with Jim Heinz and got some insight into some things that were going on uh, in the pen business. But I bought this pen and I could not be happier with it. Why is that? Well, let's flip the camera, open the box, and how about I take advantage of a really beautiful day outside and take this thing out in the sun. I'm not just going to put it on the turntable. I don't think that would do it justice. We're going to go put this on the turntable in the sun and let you see a really beautiful pen. Let's flip that camera and dive in. Just an absolutely beautiful pen. It reminds me a lot of the Blue Marble Project by NASA and other space agencies to map the Earth from space. And it just has captured those colors so very well. Just, just a beautiful, beautiful resin. Very, very simple lines. And I, I like it. It is a large pen. It is not an overly heavy pen at all. Uh, and it is a solid resin pen. Very, very nicely done. Gunmetal clip and the Heinz logo. Get that right side up. The Heinz logo at the top in the finial. And then just a simple end of the barrel. Open the pen up and you will find that they have been uh, generous with the thickness of the resin, and that's always good. I like that. Makes for a good sturdy pen. Again, not a heavy pen, but a sturdy pen. My lighting is not going to be favorable for looking down the barrel, but I've had no issues with dry out in this pen whatsoever. Now, back to the nib. As far as the nib goes, you will notice it has that Heinz logo again and some scrolling, and it is a 1.1 stub. Now, Heinz is known for offering color-matched nibs, so you can get a blue, green, or black nib 
for this pen. They were sold out at the uh, pen show when I got this pen because I went toward the end of the pen show. That was my my fault. I, I, I hem-hawed around, you know, debating my purchase even though I'd planned on it in any way just because that's the way I am over anything over like, you know, the price of a cup of coffee. And so I, uh, I timed out on the colored nib. Now, he would have been willing to send me a color match nib, but I decided to just go ahead and go with the standard finished nib and I, I really like this and I actually think it looks good together but if you'd rather have those colors those are available when you order your pen and I could always go back and order one myself should I decide that I'd like to have that color matched nib but really good looking pen and it of course it does come with a standard international converter it is a cartridge converter I believe that's probably a Schmidt uh, converter looks like it to me and as you can tell this has Hiroshizuku Konpeki in the pin. Very, very nicely done. Nicely turned. You can see there the threads are well done. They don't interfere with writing at all. Very comfortable section. Uh, long enough. You can raise and lower your grip if you like. It is uh, belled at the end, but very, very nicely done. And that, of course, always love a, a long pen like that with a number six nib just so well balanced and it does it does post and that does not back weight it too badly at all it does make it a bit as you can see there a bit of a baseball bat as is the case for all such large pens now that we've done all of that how about we do a size comparison and then check out how this pen writes all right so there is the jim hines this is a Majan M800 in that really beautiful green resin. And then a Jinhao 100. So you can see this is quite the large pen. Or, and this is going to look out of place in all that color, isn't it? A Twisby Eco. Also, a, not a small pen itself. Or one more very familiar sized pen the uh, Platinum Preppy, in this case, the highlighter. So that gives you an idea. This is a pretty good sized pen. All right, well, you didn't get to see me write any of this because I got to the Kunpeki when I realized, you know what? I didn't hit that fancy little red button on my phone and the screen went dim. Uh, I've had one of those weeks. I think my screen might have gone dim more than once. You know what I'm saying? Okay, anyway, this is... Con Pecky Inc. So this is the Jim Hines 1.1 Yovo Stub Number 6 size with Con Pecky Inc. And you can at least see uh, a bit of a, a writing sample there. One nice thing about a stub is it just adds all this great variation and it does it so easily, so well. And uh, this one does it with plenty of ink as well. Flow is really good. I just enjoy it. And I know that uh, here recently somebody said, oh, no, you're not, you're not doing with that stub what you're supposed to do. It has to be written with this way. And here's the thing. The great thing about a stub is that it, it brings personality to anybody's writing, but it's their writing. It is your pen. It is your nib. And it is to be written with in your own way. It is a tool of self-expression, not of random stranger on the internet expression. Anyway, some people still, that's their motto. It's on their, it's on their t-shirts. You're not doing that right. There's a person on the internet. Anyway, anyway, what I like is that you can do with that pen as you please. Enjoy it. Do your own thing. You do you. Any more bumper stickers you want me to add to that? Whatever. <laughs> I, won't, I won't add whatever. I don't like that. Anyway, I really like this pen. And I love that, you know, you get to meet the person. You go to the pen show, you meet the person who made 
the pen. Got to meet some other pen makers as well. Didn't have enough money to buy from all of them. You know that's right. Um, but I, I have, you know, some that uh, they're they're definitely on my list. If you are a pen maker out there, and you're you're working hard through all this pandemic and dealing with all this stuff, maybe you uh, like them have also dealt with the Yovo nib unit issue and had to take a hit personally because of that. Let me just say we really do all appreciate your work and I want to highlight your work whenever I can here on the channel. So I'm going to be hunting down more of these kinds of pins. Uh, budget wise, you know, it, it, it won't be all the time. This is still very much a budget channel and that won't be changing. But I do hope here and there to be able to highlight some individual pin makers like this because there are just some great, great things out there on offer and some great pins and we ought to support them whenever we get the chance and the opportunity to do that. All right. God bless you all. I hope that you're doing well. We just kind of got out of quarantine our own self here and uh, just hope you're doing well. See you in the comments below and in